Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neese from Torah Life Ministries, and I'm so excited to have my friends back on this uh, this this group discussion. Uh, we have Zach Bauer, Lex Meyer, and Sal Bababinos, uh, and we're going to be introducing each of them, and we're going to be talking about different topics. And we invite you to post your questions below the video, and we will be getting together to talk about other topics in the future. So we'd like you to uh, post anything you'd like us to speak about in the future. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pass it along to uh, Zach, and he's going to introduce himself, and then Lex, and then Sal. And then we're going to talk about today's topic. So uh, Zach, say hello to the audience. Hello, audience. So, hey, listen, it's good to be back finally with these guys. I love, I miss these guys when we don't get a chance. We're always busy. We've got a lot of things going on in our lives. And so when we get together for something like this, it's really special. So, um, uh, And then I love all the comments that we get when we do things like this. We get a lot of comments and a lot of good feedback. And so that's always good, too. So um, what I wanted to do, they told me, hey, listen, uh, you, Zach, you picked the topic today. And I decided that that's a great idea. I have a good topic. You know, I get a lot of comments and a lot of emails on my channel and on my website. And uh, one of the big things I get is about the Shabbat. People who are new to Torah come to my website, and they're like, you know, I really get this. I mean, I see it. I see what you, I see what you mean. I, I, I get the scriptures you're talking about from the point of view, from the Hebraic point of view. Now, what do I do? How do I get started? What does my family do? And my family um, really wants to, to start walking this walk. You know, what's, what's the first step, Zach? And, you know, one of the biggest questions we get is the Shabbat. How do we keep Sabbath? And so I thought it would be a great idea if we could go around the table and each one of us talk about how does your family keep the Shabbat? Uh, because, again, this is something that comes up a lot with the audience that I have. You know, how do I keep Shabbat? What does your family do? What, what's my marching orders? And I, I wanted to kind of convey the idea that there isn't a rigid set of marching orders. Really, I have found in Scripture, and, and we can talk about this, is really just about five things or so that the, the Father commands his people to keep the do on Shabbat. So it's not really that hard uh, of, of a task or a commandment to keep. And so uh, I just want to open it up to everyone and kind of go around the table and see how, how does your family keep, keep Shabbat because I, I really believe that it's encouraging for people to see or hear what other people do and it gives them an idea of what they can do for their families um, because this is in, indeed a special time. So maybe we'll just start back with Paul and, and Paul can kind of open it up and then we'll go with Lex and, and, and Sal and then I'll just kind of uh, close on my end and then we'll just go down whatever rabbit trails that happen to come along uh, during the process. Uh, absolutely, that's fine. But before I tell you how I keep Shabbat with my family, uh, let's introduce Sal and Lex. Uh, just say hi, guys, and give out maybe uh, your website, and then I'll uh, let everyone know how I keep Shabbat, and then we'll go down the line. So, Lex, you want to say hi? Okay, sure. Hi, um, I'm Lex Meyer, and my ministry is called Unlearn, and my website is unlearnthelies.com. Hey guys, I'm Sal Baldovinos and I'm with Teshuva Ministries and that's teshuvaministries.net. Along with my ministry partner Scott Blair, we put together uh, kind of a consortium of videos from across the net which features teachers like Paul, like Zach, and like uh, Rico Cortez, everyone on this channel as well. Um, it's a great resource for someone who's getting started, so today's topic is, is perfect for the uh, getting started page of Teshuva Ministries, so go check that out. Wonderful, guys. It's so great to be back with you. And uh, the topic that Sal, uh, that Zach's bringing up today is I get a, a lot of questions about it also and have made videos on my website, uh, TorahLifeMinistries.org, about it. Uh, but basically what I tell people is when they ask me uh, how should we be keeping Shabbat, uh, I first tell them it's not really focusing on what you should be doing. Try to focus on what you shouldn't be doing. Uh, so we shouldn't be doing our, our normal day's work that we do every single day and we also got to look at the motive behind what we're doing. There are a lot of people out there that say we're never supposed to touch money or do business on Shabbat. Well, I, I know it's a day of rest and it's a day uh, to uh, spend with a family and also with fellowship. Uh, but I also know if our motive, uh, you know, I, I have no problem working hard on Shabbat, but with the motive of promoting the gospel. So when I'm with my family, I love to just rest. Uh, as much as possible. I used to go to fellowship, but I have little kids and my family couldn't always join me. So I, I didn't like uh, being separated from them on Shabbat. So now we like to spend each other uh, time at home with each other. It's the one day a week that I actually uh, sleep in later than the other days. And, and we just have a good time in fellowship with each other. And every now and then we have a get-together with uh, other believers and we go hang out with them. However, 
Uh, we just traveled, and we we in great fellowship with other people when we were on the road. And my family's away right now, and I'm here alone. And like I said, I was having a great time uh, going out there and preaching the gospel with some friends on Shabbat and in great fellowship as well. So for, for us, it, it changes quite often. Uh, but it's, we don't focus on what we should be doing. We like to focus on what we – well, we don't focus on it, but we just be careful about what we shouldn't be doing. And we let it just take flow from there. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, I, I know you guys have children also. What about you, Sal? How do you do it? Well, when we first started out, um, we we started off in a synagogue. So we went weekly um, to a local congregation uh, in Texas. And we did that for quite some time. And as it happens to be you know, the bureaucracies, the, the hierarchies in an institution kind of drew us away from from that kind of corporate atmosphere. Um, so from there we went into a home study and it was my family uh, which consists of six kids, oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> and uh, I think everyone in this community would, would understand and, and cheer for that, but every time I say six kids they're like, are they all yours? Uh, <laughs> 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 well we picked some up at Walmart, the other two were at uh, Target. So. <laughs> but Back back to the story. Um, we did home study for quite some time. It was my in-laws who, thankfully, and you know, y'all willing, live right across the street from us. Um, so we're very much like everyone loves Raymond. We just come in and out of each other's homes. Um, it, it's a very pleasant uh, relationship with my in-laws. Um, so a, a family friend, my in-laws, we would meet every Shabbat. We would go through the Torah portions. Um, and, and with kids, to to answer that more directly, to with kids, it is tough. Um, you know, we try to set aside, set aside time for a kid's learning time, but it, it's honestly tough for me. I, I don't I don't consider myself a good children's teacher. Um, I love getting into the Word, and I love getting into really deep studies, getting into the Paleo-Hebrew, understanding how one word can take on so many meanings just by looking at the original Hebrew context and removing the Greek mindset. Um, now that we're in such a large more corporate uh, gathering in my home where we have upwards of 10 families and the kids outnumber the adults most days. Um, it, it, it is pretty tough, but we, we still try to incorporate them into the study. Um, you know, we encircle them in, in my living room. They sit on the rug, they sit on the carpet, and they listen. They at least get it through osmosis, even if the teaching isn't directly associated or, or done in a format that they understand it. As long as they're there and they participate for a set amount of time, then we let them go, you know, have a snack, go play outside uh, on the playground or anything like that. Um, but but it can be a challenge with kids, and, and I would encourage you, if, if you're starting a home group, to facilitate a children's study, which is something that we're trying to do right now. Find that individual or find the group of individuals who have a passion for uh, teaching children. Um, and that's not to not include them from the adult studies, but it's to get get the adult studies a little bit more uh, less distracted, if, if that's a better way of saying it. Um, but always incorporate the children. Um, you know, Torah tells us that we're supposed to, you know, raise our children the right way by by having them hear the word. And if at a minimum they're hearing us speak and discuss and and have a good debate over what what we're talking about, then they at least understand that that's that's how it should be. That's how Torah has modeled our communities to be like. Wonderful, wonderful. That's great. Uh, before we hear from Lex, uh, there are a lot of people out there that often tell me that there's no fellowship near them, so they don't have anyone to keep Shabbat with. And one of the things we've done, which has become common for me since I'm with my family and I don't always have fellowship with others, is on Friday nights we have a live Shabbat Google Hangout that's really taken off. We get about 80 to 100 people on there live every Shabbat night and regulars. So that's really been able to give fellowship to people that don't normally have it, and sometimes people are even on there with their children. And uh, I, I, I hope to get you guys on there at some point. Uh, Lex, what about you? You're there in, uh, in, you just moved, so you're a little farther away from a lot of people, and Sal's like in the middle of no. I mean, uh, Zach's in the middle of nowhere, but <laughs> what do you do on, uh, on, on Shabbat? Well, we, um, when we lived in Oklahoma City, we had a, uh, a home group that met in our, ho in our house, and uh, we discussed, you know, kind of like what Sal was talking about, we, you know, we, we read read from the scriptures and we talked about what we what we read and we had probably 30 or 40 people uh, that would meet in our home 
and do that uh, on on Saturday evenings, and we'd have some food and some fellowship, and and just hang out and talk and stuff like that. And um, we moved, and now we live out in the country, and we live about 30 or 40 miles away from where we used to live. And uh, we still have the home group that meets in our house, but we don't have uh, the same home group that we had that meets in our in, that used to meet in our house in Oklahoma City. Uh, because some of them just can't drive that far. Um, some of them were coming from uh, 30 or 40 miles on the other side of the city and coming in, and now they'd have to basically be coming twice as far. And so some of them come once in a while. Some of them uh, have gone to other home groups. But uh, we still have a home group that meets in our house, and we still uh, do Bible study on Saturday evenings. Um, but it's it's uh, it's slowed down uh, who comes, but it's uh, hadn't hindered us from being able to have the Bible study, um, but we, uh, as far as what we do on Shabbat, we have uh, just my family. Uh, we try to have kind of a special dinner on Friday evenings to to start, uh, kind of welcome in Shabbat, and we kind of make that a special deal. And um, we try to get the kids to sleep in on Saturday mornings, but I say try because I have a five year old and a two year old, and they come up when the sun wakes up. And so it's hard to get them to, to stay in bed and stay asleep. So usually I'll end up getting up with them and trying to keep them quiet so my wife can sleep in a little bit. And then she does the same thing for me on Sunday. So at least we both get to sleep in a little bit on the weekend. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, through the day, throughout the day on Shabbat, we will, uh, you know, we obviously we don't do any kind of work. Um, we don't, uh, you know, we don't work on the car. We don't work on the yard. We, you know, we just try to, spend family time and make uh, Shabbat about family and do stuff with our kids and and then Saturday evenings when we have the Bible study. So that's kind of how we do Shabbat. Yeah, we have a we have a similar approach to you um, as far as setting aside, you know, Friday evening comes around and you know we, we do a meal plan. Um, my wife puts together a calendar of what we're going to eat throughout the week. Um, but Shabbat we started about a month ago, maybe two months ago, where my in-laws come over for, for dinner. Um, and we specifically set aside a budget for Shabbat evening meals where it's it's a special thing. It's not, you know, we're, we're going to do spaghetti and garlic bread. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, we want to we wanna have a nice dinner. So we'll get the bottles of wine. We'll get... Um, We'll get salmon, and, and we'll treat ourselves to a nice big fillet of salmon. Um, that's usually how how it rolls out. Um, this past weekend, we we had a theme for Shabbat dinner, and we went Mediterranean. So my mother-in-law made falafels and tahini sauce, and this great salad mix with pita and hummus. Um, so we try to make it fun. We try to incorporate that into our Shabbat group as well, um, where we have some type of theme. And because it's essentially a crock pot or a potluck uh, gathering. Um, you know, we put it out there. Hey, this week we're bringing this. What are you guys bringing? Or <laughs> let, let's do this theme as you know. Uh, I think one one time last year we did um, foods from our countries because we have uh, we have a couple from South Africa who who join us. Um, I'm from Central America. Uh, you know, we have Irish and just the gamut of of cultures that come into our our home. Um, so everyone prepared a dish that was specific to that culture. Um, obviously, keeping it clean and you know no shellfish, all that great stuff. Um, so it's fun. Um, to to Paul's point about looking at the things we shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, I, I, for the longest time <clears throat> when we were going to Shabbat at, at a synagogue, we would go out to eat. That was like the Sunday church thing to do, right? You you go to church and then you go have have lunch. Um, and we were convicted when we left that you know we were doing the wrong thing. We were spending money on Shabbat. We were not keeping it set aside. We weren't being holy. Um, as we continued to study and continue to really inductively study Genesis and what what does it mean to work? What is work? Understanding you know the prohibitions that m rabbinical Judaism has put on that, where you can't even flip a light switch. You know the the burdens of the Torah that you know Yeshua taught against and the traditions. Um, for us we were convicted that what we were doing was wrong in going out to eat. We still don't do that now, but if I have to go get a pack of water bottles for Shabbat or if I forget to um, you know, get something for a Shabbat meal, I'm, I, I don't feel the burden that, oh my gosh, I spent money on Shabbat, you know, I've, I've committed a sin. 
Um, and, and that's a conversation that I've had a lot with new believers or, or people who are asking, you know, how do we celebrate Shabbat is, okay, well, the Jews don't, Turn on a light switch. They don't. Uh, they don't even fold paper because they're creating something new. They don't cook anything. They don't start a fire. All these different things, and, and, and it's a matter of getting getting the understanding that <laughs> they need to, uh, you know, look at what the word says. And you know, there's nowhere in Torah that says you cannot spend money. You cannot um, have an exchange with someone on Shabbat. Um, keeping it holy is an interpretation that you you have to do study for, and how do you keep it holy? So that's that's my two cents on that. So uh, before we get into mine, I, well, just for mine, um, we we yeah, we basically sleep in late, like some of you guys were talking about, and uh, we don't um, we don't do any work. You know, I mean, this is a farm. There's always work to do. There's always things that need to be done. And, you know, we do care for our animals on Shabbat. We have to care for the animals. We have to feed the animals. We have to water the animals. Um, those are things that you, you just can't ignore those things. Otherwise, they're going to die in 90-degree heat if they don't have water. Um, and, you know, we try, to get, we try to get as much done as possible before Shabbat sets in. But, uh, you know, there's just certain things like feeding the fish and feeding the animals that just need to be done. And, uh, and so... Uh, you know, so we, we get as much of that done out of the way as possible. Sleep in late. The biggest thing I try to tell people is keep that day set apart, unlike any other. Just have it set apart. It's it's not, you know, make the day special somehow. Make the day special for your family, your wife. You know, for our dinner Friday night, we usually have guests over, and um, we'll uh, we'll keep things simple. We won't put out nice plates or tablecloth. Because at the end of the evening, my, my wife has to put all that away and wash it and, and do all this. So we don't have a dishwasher we can just throw it in. We ha I mean, everything's hand-washed here where we live off-grid. And so uh, she has to do all that. So we just, you know, it's paper plates, paper cups, or, or plastic cups, and it all goes into the trash. And so it's no work for my wife to do or very little work for my wife to do. And so she can enjoy the Shabbat. And so uh, he's like, yeah, you can do it for her, Zach. <laughs> uh, we're texting back and forth as we're talking. So, um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I, she doesn't want me doing dishes because if I do dishes, it's about, right? <laughs> it, well, it, if I do dishes, things go put, put in places where they shouldn't be going, you know? So, You'll have to um, make the work harder the next day, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And then she's stressed out because she doesn't know where Zach put the cups at or whatever. So... Um, but yeah, so we, we just kind of keep things very simple, keep things fun for the kids. On Shabbat morning, we sleep in late, we give the kids up, and uh, sometime in that morning, I give the kids a blessing. I put my firstborn on my knee, or, and then my secondborn, and we I give them a blessing. And um, I think there's very powerful words that a parent can give to their children. They speak over their children, and so I, I give them blessings every day, uh, or, or every Shabbat, every week. And then uh, we usually go to a fellowship, we travel to town, and... Um, we get together with other people, and they bring a potluck, and uh, we, we just enjoy the word later in the day, starting at about 3 o'clock. So that gives us basically all morning and early afternoon just to spend with the family and just do nothing and just relax. And uh, and, and so the end of the day is, just, is complete because we get to get together with other believers, and we fellowship. And so we, that that's very fulfilling for us. And then we just end the day, you know, coming back home and getting ready for work the next day. So, um it's, you know, that's that's how we do our Shabbat. Nothing too crazy, but it's you know very simple. Well, I, I got to be honest. I mean, I don't. I pray every day my kids are going to get the understanding of Shabbat. But right now, I'm not teaching them really well because I'm not setting up a good thing. Because they ask me about 20 times a day on Shabbat, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And we say no, and they say why not? And I say because it's Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I'm setting the best example, because when they grow up and they're they're free to do what they want to do, uh, hopefully they'll realize, okay, it's Shabbat, I can't do this, and they won't start thinking, well, now I'm free and I can do what I want, because that is like the the, the killer for them when they hear us say, no, because it's Shabbat, it's Shabbat. Uh, they're not able to do all the wonderful uh, uh, things they love to do during the week. So, uh, But, uh, you know, that's what we want to do, and that's what all you seem to do is you seem to – Get your kids involved, and that's an important thing. Uh, that's an important thing. There's a topic I want to bring up for people because, Zach, you said, and new to Torah's your channel, and a lot of people new to Torah ask this. What I find is a lot of people new to Torah ask this, and a lot of people that have been in Torah for a long time uh, have division over this, and it creates a problem. But what we need to understand, everybody, <coughs> but is extremely helpful, and it's a blessing to follow 
the guidelines and instructions of our Creator, regardless of how we each figure out how to do that. But the thing we have to understand is you're not saved by keeping Shabbat. You know, we have to understand that it's not a salvation issue. I want everyone watching to keep Shabbat and do it with joy, but you're not going to hell if you messed up. And that's something you need to think about if you're new to this. And it's not, you don't throw out everything because, oh, I messed up on Shabbat. Let, well, let me just say real quick before you get, get into this, that the guy who was killed in the Torah, in that Torah portion, when he was out kindling st or picking up sticks. That was this week's Torah portion, by the way. Right, right, yeah, right. He, he was outright, being outright rebellious against God's commandment. So there's a difference in messing up. And then there's a difference in being rebellious. Well, well there's, that, a, lot, that, there's a lot of people that use that scripture to, to that, you know, yeah. talk about the fire as well, that we can't kindle a fire. And, and when you look at the Hebrew, those, well, two, those two instances are completely separated as well. The man who was gathering sticks, you, you continue reading, and it's directly in front of Korah's rebellion, and they were setting up their own tabernacles and their own fire pans. So, so that correlation between the two is always, oh, you can't gather wood and kindle a fire on the Sabbath. Well, those two things aren't even in the same chapter. One's in right. chapter 16, the other one's in 14. So how, how are you connecting the two when Korah's rebellion is directly after the man who kindled, kindled the, uh, or gathered the wood for, for the fire? Go ahead, Paul. Finish your, finish your thought, Paul. It, it, it's not all, I mean, if you read this past week's Torah, Portia, it not only was he rebellious, but it was the timing of it. I mean, he literally did it right after the warnings came about, you know, of being rebellious. Right after it, it was like the the worst popular, <laughs> possible timing for this man to do something like this. If you read it, it came exactly after. It's like, don't do this, this, and you've done this, and, and Yah was mad with this, and all of a sudden the guy does it. You know, it was the worst timing, and uh, and that had a lot to do with it. There was a, a an old Jewish man at our fellowship yesterday, and he was... On the borderline, if he accepted Yeshua or not, but he was stuck. He grew up in uh, in Judaism, and he was old. I mean, he was in his 80s or maybe even older. And and when we brought that up about the man picking up the stick and being stoned, uh, he had a lot to say about that, you know. And uh, and and just like you guys are saying, just like what Sal said, and just like what I said, and and I'm sure Lex has an opinion about the guy you picking. Know, up you know, the my <clears throat> excuse me, my father-in-law made a good point. Also, he he kind of said, you know, they just got told that they're going to be wandering for 40 years. Maybe this guy was like, you know what, forget it all. I'm just going to do my own thing. And, you know, you can't you can't decide to make up your own rules in the camp of the righteous. You just can't do that. And so it was outright rebellion what this guy was doing. Go ahead, Lex. Just for the record, I picked up a stick on uh, Shabbat, and I didn't get stoned. So it's... That's because we weren't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, Lex, what do you got to say? Um, well, you know, what I, I actually wanted to say something that doesn't really have anything to do with the sticks. Um, the one thing that's that's really kind of um, been transformational in in my own life, anyway, is whenever I I saw how the how the Sabbath is a it's a sign of what God we're in covenant with. Because in 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 Exodus 20, when it says, "Remember the Sabbath," because in six days God created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day He rested. And so by keeping and observing the Sabbath, we are identifying with the God of creation, the one who created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. And we're saying, this is the God I'm in covenant with. This is the God that I'm following. This is the God I'm serving. This is the one I love. And by keeping his commandments, uh, we are showing who we worship and, and who we follow. Okay. And so it's, it's, you know, I, I heard a phrase one time, uh, you know, you could tell me all, all day what God you serve, but... I want to see it by the commandments you keep. Show me what God you serve by the commandments you're keeping. And and that really, you know, when you think about it, is is huge because when Israel went into, um, uh, they started doing paganism and they started practicing the pagan ways and they started mixing their faith and and incorporating pagan worship practices. Well, that was the problem is is they were not serving the God of Israel anymore. They were serving pagan gods. And so. Um, you know, show me which God you serve by which commandments you keep. Are you keeping the Sabbath? The one that that the the God of creation said this is a sign between you and me for all creation, and and identifying with the Creator God who created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. And that's huge, I think. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, 
it's something when people are new to this, I mean, when you first realize that, you know, and come to the realization, I just posted something to my Facebook page, a Pope uh, or some kind of Roman guy in some costume was saying that there's no <laughs> in the scriptures that say the Sabbath is uh, on Sunday and it was changed. And what's, it's, it's a big thing because, I mean, this is probably the number one issue uh, from an outer appearance when people start keeping Shabbat on Saturday on the correct day that they have to deal with their friends and their family and everything else. This is it. It's like, okay, we can no longer do these things on Shabbat, or we choose not to because it's Sabbath. That's the biggest issue the outside world has with people, and, and that's where it begins. That's where it's like, you know, people start calling them legalists and everything else. That's the, the biggest sign, and I want to encourage people that are getting uh, flack from people that you're doing something right because yeah. now you're set apart, and that's what holy means. So, yep. you know, if everyone's fine with what you're doing, that doesn't that, that mean, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing, you know. So when they start getting worried about you or raising eyebrows, then you're doing something right. And the Sabbath is a big one. So if you're new to this and you decide to keep Shabbat, you know, realize that, that that's going to happen. Another thing is, here's a question for you guys. What do you do? Because I have, I have several people that contact me, and I know you get questions about this. What do you suggest people do? When there's a family with kids and one spouse is convicted to keep Shabbat and the other one is not, what would you recommend for people in that case? Stoner. <laughs> we, we actually have we have a we have a family in our group that's that's very much like that where the wife brings the children to Shabbat, um, but the husband is still you know a part of the world for for lack of a better term. Um, you know that it's just something that you have to pray about and continuously pray about, but it's not, it shouldn't be a dividing matter, um, you know, unless that individual is into idolatry, fornication, and you know the the four things that Paul talks about in uh, Acts 15. Um, but all, all you can do is is pray for that person and love that person with all your heart. And as a community, we pray for that family that you know the eyes be opened of the husband. Um, and, and you know he's a great guy. He's a good secular person more than most religious people that I know. Takes care of the family, drives them, you know, to and fro. Uh, you know, he came to Sukkot. That that was a step. Um, but you know, the, the advice that I can give is is just to continuously pray. You know, there's there's going to be division. There's going to be arguments over it. But at the end of the day, you have to be committed because. The covenant, as Lex pointed out, the covenant that you've made with the Creator supersedes the covenant that you've made with your spouse, because because of our hardened hearts, Moshe gave us the ability to divorce. But we need to have that compassion and that uh, intestinal fortitude to push push through the these issues and not. Well, I'm going to keep Sabbath starting now, and if you don't do it, we're getting a divorce. Um, you know, Paul talks about this this walk and this journey being uh, a race. And you you talk to any athlete out there, they don't go run a 5K because they decided to go run a 5K today. They have to train for it. They have to figure out what works and what doesn't work, what foods are good for you, what foods are not good for you. They have to exercise. They have to stretch. They have to do all of these things in preparation before they can get it perfected and and actually do. The, the intended goal of the 5K or the, or, or the marathon. Um, so you have to just take it one day at a time, continue to pray. Um, if, if they're not a praying family, then um, make sure that, you know, if, if your community, if you have one, if, if you can find one online or, you know, get on Facebook, community is such a loose term in, in this digital age. You know, you can have people pray with you, pray for you, you know, join Paul's uh, Shabbat study, you know, have that conversation with your spouse and say, this is what I'm doing. I, I encourage you to join me in it. And if you don't, I understand. I'm not going to push it on you. I'm not going to force you. And I think that type of love and that type of compassion will ultimately um, soften their hearts and you know show them the true mercy that Messiah gave everyone. Because Messiah didn't go around you know, beating people over the head about keeping Shabbat. He, he just said, keep my commandments. And that's it. Go and sin no more. It's simple enough. Go and sin no more. You know, I often uh, equate this to when I was in the military. You know, in in you know, people who are non-commissioned officers, NCOs, which are sergeants and above, you know, all the way up to officers. An officer comes and he'll give his platoon or his NCOs an order from up higher, 
It comes down to him. He gives it, it passes down the chain of command. And at some point, the person, you know, the little E5 sergeant platoon leader has got, or uh, squad leader has got to figure out, okay, this is the order. It's up to me to figure out how I carry it out. And so that responsibility falls on me. Now, it may not be how the other squad leader carries his order out, but I'm going to carry my order out the best way I know how, and he makes that decision on his own. And so, you know, it's like the same way with the commandments. When, when, the, when the orders come down, when we look at the commandments, we understand, okay, we need to keep Shabbat, we need to rest on that day. There's different ways you can figure out how to keep that commandment. But keep the commandment. Mm-hmm. There's, figure out, there's different ways you can figure out how to carry out that order. But, you know, the order is to carry out the order. And so I equate the military because I see a lot of the military, you know, in how the tribes are arranged and how, uh, you know, Israel itself is arranged. Um, it's very military-like. And so in the same way, when we, we would get an order in the military, you were to carry out that order to the best of your ability. Uh, you may be different than somebody else, but you, you still carry out the order. Yeah, and also and so, from um, a military standpoint, keep in, in Hebrew is shamar, to guard it. You know, it's not so much keeping it to yourself and how you keep it, but guarding the Sabbath. You know, you are protecting it from the outside elements, the outside world. You are placing a hedge of protection, like farmers did with their sheep or, or shepherds did with their sheep. You place a, a thorn bush around the Sabbath so that the outside world does not influence what you but do. But the right, but the my my meaning is my my thorn bush doesn't have to be. Uh, isn't bad because it's different than your thorn bush. Right. You know what I mean? But there are people who will attack you because you don't have the same type of thorn bush that that I do, and 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 so they you do it differently, so you're wrong. You know, and, and and you know that's where the, the traditions and doctrines of man come in. Um, you know, I, and so that's that's my big thing. So I the, one of the big things I get in my email is that right there that my thorn bush is different than your thorn bush, and so therefore you're wrong. Yeah. Well, we we have to understand. You know, we're here to help each other, and and. And that's what we have to do. You know, we have to think, just like when you're new to Torah in general and, and people start questioning you, first thing I always think is, well, what's their motive? Do they sincerely want to learn or help me, or are they just trying to, like, find something wrong? So if somebody's going to uh, rebuke you about the Sabbath or the way you're doing something, uh, pray about what's their motive. If their motive is really to learn or, or, or to help you and judge you righteously, well, get in a nice discussion with them. But if, if you see their motive is just to, like, Prove you wrong or prove scripture wrong. Do your best to avoid that uh, that thing because look, even though we're all doing it our own way, that doesn't mean we're doing it right. And 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 that's what we're here for to help each other. We're here to you know look. I can be thinking I'm doing it right and doing something wrong, and if one of you guys tell me you know let's look at scripture together, I know your heart and you know my heart. Yeah. But if if somebody comes to you, you know with the wrong heart, then you got to just try to avoid them. So. It is an individual thing, and uh, we have to look at it that. But what's somebody's motive when they start questioning you? And ultimately, it comes down to look. It's your family, your house, and you know, it's an individual thing. And people do it in different ways. And and I travel around, and I see people doing it in different ways. And sometimes we pick up new ideas. Sometimes we try different ideas. I mean, you know, we all have the ultimate setting and what we'd like to be doing. But then we have life. And, you know, I have a little kid and I have an older kid and my little kid's not going to hang out all afternoon at some stranger's house in a fellowship and especially not in a congregation without crying and disrupting the whole place where my, my uh, older child might be able to do something uh, like hanging out there all afternoon or something. So each situation is different and it changes. As my little girl gets a little bigger, that might change. We might be able to go to certain environments more, but... Uh, so it's always different, you know, and I, I want to encourage people to get on a Friday night hangout because it's a great way to open up Shabbat. And regardless if you have stuff to do on, on, on the day of Shabbat or not, on Friday night you're hanging out with 100 believers uh, asking questions and just having a great time. So uh, it's really cool and it's 10 o'clock Eastern time to midnight Eastern time and sometimes we go to 3 in the morning and people say, well, why is it so late? I say, well, as my family goes to sleep, and now I have time to do that. And, you know, and I personally don't like to stay up that late, especially on Shabbat, but I'm doing it for, for fellowship, and I'm doing it for everyone, and, and it's just been a blessing. That's another thing, too. I, I, I get uh, this, this common question about people who, um, who say, and I enjoy this. Let me just say I enjoy staying home on Shabbat and just not going anywhere, even for a fellowship, because it, just, it seems like it opens up the day. We have less to worry about when it comes to either traveling, 
um, and some of our roads during horrible weather is just bad to travel, and so uh, in putting together uh, whatever potluck thing we're bringing, my wife is going to bring that day for the fellowship. And so my family really enjoys just staying home sometimes and just avoiding the fellowship altogether, but um, I, I really think that you really need to get together with people on a regular basis on Shabbat. I think you really need to, like you're doing, Paul, up with your video. All these people, and I, I mean, I know probably most of them have no fellowship at all whatsoever, and so they love the idea of getting together with people and just kind of conversing and, and getting that fellowship and that and that love with fellow believers who have a have a love for their Messiah and their Torah. And so that's something that's so, so huge for people. But you know, I, I really enjoy getting together on Shabbat with people and and, when, and coming to fellowship. And there's some people I think that avoid that because they they well, like for instance, the Sabbath day journey. Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah. People are 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 curious and they're cautious about, should I be traveling on Shabbat? Should I even go anywhere on Shabbat? I mean, what are your thoughts? I have a, I have a friend that never travels on Shabbat, and, he, and if he wants to be somewhere on Shabbat, he usually sleeps over somebody's house. Uh, and, you know, he's known as that guy that crashes everyone's house. But he's a single <laughs> young guy, and, and that's what he does. Uh, and he's convicted. And my thoughts on it are, if that's what you're convicted to do, then I don't see an issue with it, but I don't think it's a... Yeah. It necessarily a command, but he feels it is, and and he feels really strong about that. I would love to have that conviction because this the it, that'll keep you real safe. Because the farther you drive, the more of a chance uh, it's it it takes a lot of energy to drive. Uh, but but you know, some people have that conviction, and some don't. And uh, what do you guys think, Lex and Sal? Well, um, I, you know, I I don't know the exact distance uh, that's considered a Sabbath day's journey anyway, but. Being that I live about 30 or 40 miles in the country, if the people who came to my Bible study went uh, according to that Sabbath day journey thing, they may not be able to come to our Bible study because it may be too far for them. And so I, I think it probably kind of has something to I, I would say go with your motive. And if your motive is to um, do something that would honor Shabbat, then, you know, what... You know what? What's it matter if you're going to jump in your car and drive someplace? Um, but if your if your motive is to do something that really doesn't honor Shabbat, then you know maybe you need to consider uh, doing it a different day or something. You know, is 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 I think probably the direction I would caution people. Um, if if what you're doing is is honoring Shabbat, then you know I, I don't think you need to count your steps and see how far you get. You know, oh man, it's I'm, I'm ten steps. Short of, of being able to do this, uh, oh, I can't well. enter your house now. <laughs> I can't. I had to stand outside on your porch because I took all my steps. You know, um, that's why the it, Fitbit I, was invented for Sabbath why, keepers. What? The what? The Fitbit. Oh, the the little, Fitbit. <laughs> <laughs> to track your Sabbath day journey. Yeah, um, but you know, I think some people get too caught up in technicalities and details, and and uh, it really. They don't enjoy the liberty we have in it, and the and the the joy and the freedom that we have in the Shabbat, because they're too caught up on nitpicking details, and a lot of times those details aren't even in, in the Bible. They're not commandments. They're not. They're doctrinal uh, versus scripture. They're, they're yeah, it's doctrine. It's something that some man came up with at some point, and it kind of got adapted as tradition, and people get caught up in those traditions and and make doctrines out of them. Rather than maybe just using them as as uh, guidelines to establish your own traditions, and so I, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a tradition, but you don't want your tradition to supersede or to trump what the scripture says. Exactly. And so, you know, it's it's fine if you have a tradition of eating, uh, you know, salmon every Friday night, but don't make a doctrine out of it that you you have to have salmon every Friday night because that's not you know that's just silly you know that's not biblical. <laughs> um, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And I think for me, the important part, you know, aside from the the Sabbath day journey and and getting more into the motive, what is the Sabbath? It's supposed to be a joy. It's not supposed to be a burden. Keeping Torah shouldn't be a burden. So all of these restrictions and all of these uh, prohibitions that have been done through doctrine and through tradition don't make Sabbath joyful. Maybe it does for some people, especially if you're just starting out and you say, no, I can't fold toilet paper because the Torah says so. Okay, you know, if that makes you happy, fine. But at the end of the day, Shabbat, the Sabbath, is supposed to be a joyful day. And 
recently, I, you know, I took on new responsibilities at my at my job, and it has been the most stressful uh, time in my life. Uh, just a lot of stress. What that did for me is a, it, it's a, it's a position that I've always longed for with authority, you know, with title, all of that stuff. But that's that's this flesh side of my nature that desired those things. And I strongly believe that our Father gives us sometimes what we want to show us it's not what we needed. Um, and, you know, now I'm at a point where, okay, I've overcome some of the hard stress transitions that have happened in my workplace, but what that forced me to do was what I wasn't doing in the first place was praying every single day, praying every single morning, praying in the evening, praying with my kids. But it also made me long for and cherish and have a very joyful Shabbat. That's what it made me realize, that through these five days of just turmoil and stress and meetings and just back and forth, that when Friday evening came, I could just clear my mind of it, turn off my email, turn off all my you know, electronic devices um, that would have me real, you know, remembering about work, and just set it aside and say, now it's, it's my time to be with our, my family, with my creator, and with my community. Um, so, you know, if something is a burden for you to keep on, on, on the Sabbath, as long as it's not truly violating Torah, you know, put it aside for right now. Put it on the shelf. Come back to it. Study it inductively. Look at the Hebrew. Look at the characteristics of who these people were, why they did the things they did, and, and understand what it meant to, to keep Sabbath a joy. Mm-hmm. One of the things uh, people often ask me on uh, about Shabbat, people that are new to this, is uh, are they allowed to exercise on the Sabbath, or could they exercise on the Sabbath? What's your opinions about that? How would you answer that if somebody asks you guys that? Uh, you know, just actually, I get that question, but in different forms. Like, um, is it okay to go out and do work on my garden on Shabbat, on Shabbat, or can, is it okay to go hunting on Shabbat? Um, and so, my thing is like, no, that's like completely. That's like hunting and gathering. That's like gathering food and, and doing things that they, they were all, back in biblical times, were taking a break from. And so I tell people, no, absolutely not. I mean, and not only that, but I look at Isaiah 58 and going after your own pleasures on my holy day, looking after the things that I want to do that my flesh wants to do. My flesh wants to go fishing or hunting or work on my garden because I love my garden or I love my whatever. And it's just that's my flesh speaking out and saying, I want to do those things. And I'm like, no, I should be concentrating on my father. And, and, and his word and and my family because he lo- he my family is all about uh my god my god is my, my position as a husband and father is a, should be all about my family and so that's the thing that that the father has given me and so I want to tend to those things and raise up my children in, in the Torah and and so those are the things I think I should be doing not the things that my flesh desires and exercising is one of those things. Um, you know, what is, I really want to go out and exercise because I can't find, you know, what really is the deal is you can't find time to go out and exercise during the rest of the week or go hunting or go fishing or go do whatever these, uh, some of these things are. That should be something you can make time for on the other, make time for your father on the Shabbat. I mean, am I wrong, am I wrong here? Well, I mean, yeah, go ahead, Lex. Well, I was just going to say, I, th- I think a lot of the problem is people don't know what to do with empty time, empty space, sleep, um, sleep. white space, you know, you have, you have this, you, you have a, a, you know, six days of your week is just crammed full of activities, you know, you have everything scheduled, everything planned, you know, you, you pull out your calendar and, and you have something going 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you know, all day long you have something going on and you get to Sabbath and you have a day that's empty, a day that has nothing planned, a day that has nothing scheduled and they say, wow, what am I going to do? I need to fill this up with something. I need to go out and wash my car. I need to go fishing. I need to, you know, whatever. And I, I really think that has a lot to do with it. And we need to learn how to, um, how to be still, and how to listen, and how to be quiet, and how to um, wait, and have that quiet space, and have that emptiness, so that maybe God can put something in it for us. Instead of us trying to fill it up with something, yeah, let and, him speak to you. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know it, uh, I'm reminded of the of the time when Elijah went up on the mountain and you know said there was a great storm and there was a great wind and and all this stuff and and but God wasn't in that, and then there's this 
still small voice, and that's when God spoke to Elijah. And it's one of those things that we, we have so many distractions throughout the week. Sometimes Shabbat's the only time we take, you know, we have a moment of free time where we can just sit and listen and say, you know, God, what, what have you been trying to say to me all week that I haven't been able to hear because I've been too busy? And today I'm going to, I'm going to clear my calendar for you and, and let's just spend time together, just me and you, Father. And, you know, just like, you know, I want to spend time with my, my kids on Shabbat, our Father wants to spend time with us on Shabbat. And so it's, it's a time when we should clear our calendar and make room for Him, just like all the feasts. You know, in, in Leviticus 23, it says, these are the feasts of the Lord. These are my holy convocations. And it's like He's saying, I put these on the calendar. These are the times that I have set apart and said, you know, you, you guys make room for me. Clear your calendar and meet with me on these days. And Shabbat is, is one of those days. And so we need to figure out how to clear our own calendars so that we can meet with our Father and, and enjoy the time that we have with Him and not try to clutter it up with, with busyness. Yeah, if there's any question who, who truly has dominion over the earth right now after the fall, you, you can look at that lifestyle. You know, we, we fill our lives with meetings. We fill our lives with little things to do, material possessions. There's there's no question in my mind who holds the deed to the to the earth right now because of Adam's fall. Because the adversary is trying to keep us away from the Sabbath. And we have these discussions about, you know, is the Sabbath a lunar Sabbath? Is it a solar Sabbath? Is it the seventh day Sabbath? Is it Sunday? Did Constantine really change it? All of these divisive topics that um, have <laughs> have the opportunity to to continue to divide us. But at the end of the day your conviction about how you keep Sabbath is not everyone's conclusion. And that's the important part. Your conviction is yours. If, if you s do Sabbath in a particular way, uh, or if your hedge of thorns is, is done in such a way that isn't like mine or isn't like Lex's or Paul's, you know, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, we're honoring our Father. We're keeping the fifth commandment from a, from a spiritual standpoint. We're honoring our Father. And, and we're setting time aside to be with Him, to learn from Him, to learn from each other, and to edify each other's studies, to edify each other's walk. Because in the military, when, when you're on a road march, when you're on a, a run, you pick up that ba battle buddy. You, you help him up and you get him up on his feet so that he can continue that race, continue that march, because you don't leave that man behind, okay? And, and that's the important part about Sabbath, is leave no man behind and, and continue to have that, that, uh, that study. Yeah, you know, I won't call it exercise, but I, I do do my, our delight on the Shabbat. Uh, I mean, there's a big park across the street from our house, and we don't get a lot of family time during the week to just everyone together all the time as much as we would like without some type of distraction. And on Shabbat, I'll be honest with everyone, and uh, we really enjoy it. So we take a bike ride at the park sometimes uh, as a family. And some people might look at that as exercise. Some people might look at that as family time. But if somebody's watching, whether you're new to Torah, you've been doing it a long time, I think it's okay to do that. And, uh, you know, well, it goes into interpretation, Paul, because how you interpret exercise, I could turn around and say, well, <clears throat> me getting out of bed and stretching – I just exercised my body. I worked. You know, it, it all him, goes back. Exactly. Him. exactly. It all goes back <laughs> to how you how you define things, and and cool. on an individual basis, your definition or your understanding of exercise or work uh, is completely different than mine. And, and we have to just come to the middle and understand. At the end of the day, we're celebrating the Sabbath. Sure, sure. Like you said, we we we're gonna find our individual individual ways to do it. Uh, you know, but that scripture Zach brought up about not doing your own pleasure uh, has really caught uh, a lot of a lot of conversation about that too. Because it's one thing about not doing your own pleasure, and it's another thing about what we consider work is and what we consider rest is. Oh, I mean, uh, you can take anything it, like it, that. I think and it can go to the extremes of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes people do, and and it's so we got to be careful with that. And it's easy to fall into that trap when you're first starting out in Torah. And and then, like I said, later on, when you get in your ways, it's easy to point to other people and show them what they're doing wrong. So we got to be mm -hmm. careful with that. And again, folks, look at people's heart. I can tell you this week I had a unique Shabbat because my family's out of town, and that rarely happens anymore. We're, uh, we're apart. But a friend of mine slept over Friday night, and we went Friday night, and we went yesterday. 
on Shabbat, and I could figure no way better to celebrate Shabbat, but we went street evangelizing, and we just had the most amazing time. But we worked, and we, we, we drove to get there, and, uh, and we were associating with other people, and uh, it was a very unique experience, but I see the, the, the apostles doing things like that on Shabbat, and, and it was just a wonderful time. So it's different. But guys, in wrapping this up, give us your final thoughts of, of what we could tell people. And people that are watching, go and uh, post your questions below. And uh, give us your final thoughts, everyone, uh, watch, uh, I mean, on the panel, about what you want to leave people with uh, on this topic. Because they're going to keep asking it, and you're going to keep getting it. But what video, give us a minute or two here. What would you say if somebody says, can we, or how should we be keeping Shabbat? What would you point them to in you saying right now, just so they can get the gist of it real quick, other than watch this whole video? Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, I would, you know, I want to go back to Exodus 20 and, and just look at the command that uh, God gave us. He said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. He's already made it holy. Uh, he made it holy when he created the earth in six days, and he rested on the seventh, and he blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. He's just asking us to keep it that way, not to defile it with work, not to defile it with distractions, not to fill it up with our own desires and, and, and things like that, but to keep it holy as a day set apart to him, and so that everything we do on that day is, is for the purpose of spending time with our Father. And so if we, if we can do that, remember and keep it holy, remember to spend that time with Him and to keep that time set apart and holy, uh, you know, I think that's, that's where we need to begin, at least, you know. And I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do the bookend, um, since you're in Torah, um, I'll go to Paul's writings uh, in Acts 15. You know, what is a new believer supposed to do um, in addition to keeping the Sabbath, it's one of the four things. But you abstain from things that are polluted by idols, from fornication, and from things strangled with blood. But the fourth thing in that is that you are supposed to go to the synagogue and learn Torah every single week. And that's the point. You're not going to get it all in one sitting. You have to continuously do this every single day, every single week, um, and learn from the Sabbath. It's our daily bread. We can't, we can't not eat for six days and then expect to consume an entire meal of Torah or of you know study time in one day. It has to be a daily walk and you have to understand that you're not going to get it all right away. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to get trapped in into doctrine, into tradition and that's okay because it's a part of the process. Um, Arthur Bailey has a, a really great teaching on the religious traps of the messianic faith. Um, if you have a chance to check that out, if you go to teshuvaministries.net under the Getting Started section, it's the last video on there. And we made it the last video on purpose because you're going to study all these Getting Started videos from 119, from Zach, from Paul, but at the very end, you got to understand that this walk or any walk uh, comes with its traps. Um, you know, you can use the example of CrossFit. You know, that individual who just started CrossFit is going to be nailing CrossFit on, on everyone's, you know, Facebook feed or, or whatever. You know, someone who's into the raw diet who just got into it is always going to be talking about this. But you get into these traps and into these cycles of, um, you know, knowledge and, and gaining that knowledge. Um, but the important thing is your conviction is not everyone's conclusions. And just make sure that when you're studying, you're studying to be edified and you're edifying others. Um, and and I, I love your point, um, Lex, about keeping it holy, that our Creator made it holy. Our responsibility is to keep it holy. Yeah, uh, Lex an Lex's answer is my answer, so I'm just going to go with what he said. <laughs> I mean, keep keep it set apart, keep it special, you know, and, and it's it's the first it's the first mention of the feast. It's a feast. Make make it a feast. Make it something special. Set it apart. There you sure. go. Sure. Sure. Well, in the scriptures, I was talking to a fellow about this last night when it talks about those that won't make it into the kingdom, and it talks about liars and adulterers and all these things. It doesn't say there, you know, people that break the Sabbath are not going to make it. And we were wondering this, and we we said, well, you could look at that two ways. One way you could look at that as 
Well, you know, it was so commonly kept that they didn't even think, like, nobody struggled with it back then. The other way you could look at it and say, like, well, it's not one of the four things mentioned in Acts 15 either. So you could look at it from two different viewpoints. Well, and that's like the I thing, said, it is. It, huh? it is mentioned in Acts 15 because the assumption is that you would go to Sabbath every single week to continue to learn. So it's those th three things that you abstain from, but you continue to learn more because you, it, like you just said, culturally, they just... They did Sabbath. That was a part of their life. So Yeah, but absolutely. But that's what I'm saying. It could be looked at from two different ways. It's not specifically mentioned, but if it was so normally done, then you could look at it a way of, that's why, because everyone did it. You don't have to mention it. So you could look at it that way, but you could look at it another way and say, well, these are the most four important things people got to be doing. But the point is, it's not mentioned in the scripture of, these are the things we got to do to get in the kingdom. And why is that not there versus these liars you know, we know the Sabbath is mentioned much more in Scripture than lying, and there are Scriptures of righteous people lying, but it says in the Scripture, liars won't get in the kingdom, but it doesn't say Sabbath keepers won't get in the kingdom. Uh, so what I'm saying uh, is, like we said earlier, is we got to understand... Uh, Actually, yeah, it does. So it say, in Isaiah, it does say that. It says, I will bring those to my holy mountain who keep my Shabbat. And, and that's I mean, it's very clear on that one. But I think that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So if that's the case, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're, all, we're all not worthy. So my, my thing is it goes back to that heart. You know, do I have a wicked heart like it says that you know, we all have? Or have I decided I'm going to circumcise my heart and, and do things the way and follow my Father's commandments the best of my ability? And, and the best of my ability would mean to keep the Shabbat. And I'm, I'm not going to do it perfectly. I'm not. I'm going to screw up. So if I do that, if I screw up, am, am I doomed? Am I, not, am I not getting into the kingdom at ever? I think the father's going to overlook. That's where the grace comes from. Yeah, he, he's, this child has, has the willingness to obey my commandments. And so that, that's where I believe it falls my, my point was in the renewed covenant, it was, it was either so commonly done amongst the believers right. that were preaching the gospel that they didn't even have to mention it, or it, they didn't give it as much the significance of other things, but it's just in the new covenant. It's not there with these other things that are so preached about. And, and well, I, I mean, that's the thing I, I, I argue with Stephen Anderson about. You know, it doesn't say anything in the new covenant about not sleeping with your sister. That's because that was just like one of the most obvious things that you know is it, it's you didn't need mentioning. Um, you know, so it doesn't talk about sleeping with you know an animal. Either so it doesn't it, you know I tell Stephen Anderson well, does that mean we can do it because it's not mentioned in the New Testament no but it, it was something that was so obvious to the people of that day that they it didn't need mentioning you know everyone kept the Shabbat everyone you know was supposed to keep the Shabbat uh, absolutely and this is what uh, you know with Constantine changing it and changing the day and all the other crazy stuff that's happened people are farther away from it now uh, than they've ever been before and for them to turn around and come back to it. Uh, is is a great sign of their faith, and uh, and, and also that it's the most amazing confirmation that Yahweh has at least begun, and maybe even yes. more than that, lifted the scales from their eyes. And yeah. it's a great testimony of one's faith. And uh, so I think we could all agree, no matter how you decide to do it, do it, and, and uh, you know try to keep it and learn, and you will learn more. And we could say the same thing about Torah. We could say the same thing about about the feast days and everything. Uh, stop ignoring it. Stop making excuses and looking for loopholes. And honor the day that our Creator told us to honor. And, and do it with the right heart. And blessings are attached to that. We, are you all in agreement with that? Yeah. 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 Right. And can I uh, throw in one last thing also? Right. It kind of goes along with, with the last little bit that you guys have been talking about. Is uh, our Messiah, Yeshua, said... The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And it's, it's a gift to us. And so we need to welcome it as a gift and, and thank God for it and, and bless it. And, uh, you know, treat it as something sacred and special to us. Um, it's for us. It's not, we were not created to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath was created for us. It's a day of rest for us. It's a day of of, of fellowship. It's a day of, of uh, spending time with our Father. And so it's a day for us. It's not a day against us. And I think that's where a lot of people get it backwards. And they think that I have to make sure I step through all these hoops and I do all these right things, make sure I don't violate it, because 
um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to step on it and, and break it, you know. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, we, we it's, it's not as delicate as I think people act like it is. We're not going to break it that easily. Um, I think that we have to intentionally try to break it. If we're trying to uphold it, if we're trying to keep it, if we're trying to honor it, I think that's, you know, it's made for us to do so. And so I, I you know, I'm saying this as 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 a, as a means of, of liberty that it's it's there's freedom in keeping the Sabbath. It's not a burden. And so I don't I don't think we need to look at it as as something that is so fragile that we're just going to break it every time we you know give somebody the wrong look or every time we, uh, you know, take do anything. More. Yeah, <laughs> take too many you know, steps. Yeah, I, I I I walked too far today. I scratched my head. I you know I turned the light switch on. You're not breaking the Sabbath. It's not that fragile, you know. <laughs> but anyway, you guys have anything else? Uh, no. Uh, you know, uh, post your questions below, everybody. Uh, Zach, anything else? That's it. No, that's a, that's a great topic. I, I'm glad we brought it up. I thought you know that I think people are going to get a lot of encouragement from this. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Sal, how you doing? Anything else? No, that's it. I think um, just continue to, to read the word and do it to the best of your abilities. Wonderful. In case uh, pe for people that are watching, uh, myself and Sal were able to put our, our, our ministry websites on the screen because of connectivity uh, uh, issues. Uh, Sal, uh, Zach and Lex were not. So uh, Zach and Lex, uh, give out your websites so people know what they are. Uh, my website is new to torah.com new the letter two or the number two torah.com and uh, you can go there and see this video and other videos that we've done in the past I haven't updated it in a while I'm gonna update it today I think so um, all my stuff's on there okay and uh, yeah maybe I should have just wrote it on the back blackboard behind me here <laughs> uh, mine is unlearn the lies.com. And if that just you know if that just seems like too much to write out, you can just do unlearn.cc and that'll kind of shortcut you there. Uh, but unlearnthelies.com is mine. Thanks. Wonderful. And while we're at it, Sal, even though it's on the screen, tell everybody yours for those that uh, are just listening and not watching. Sure. It's teshuva, which means to repent, to turn around. Uh, teshuvaministries.net. Wonderful, and mine is uh, TorahLifeMinistries.com or .org. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for checking us out. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining. We've got to do it again, hopefully sooner this time uh, than later. And uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.